All right. Not bad at all, not bad at all, guys. Welcome back. This is Eric here with Moss Pawn and Gun. We're going to be talking about the Walther PPQ today. Um, this is a gun that many of you guys have been asking us to, you know, take it out and have a look at, do a little bit of a review on. Um, had this gun for quite a while, been doing a good bit of shooting with it. It's been a good performer so far. Uh, I've been really happy with it. It's a pretty interesting firearm design. It's kind of a take on the, uh, the P99, which of course is a service pistol, police use uh, pistol uh, in Germany that's been in service for a pretty good while. Uh, they came out with this gun around 2011 as kind of a answer to the P99, kind of a, a sort of export uh, version, kind of a, a gun that maybe they just wanna sort of market to police, military, law enforcement, you get the drift there, okay? This is also a very popular uh, pistol, obviously here in the United States, and the M2 version, which is what I'm holding here, actually has an Americanized magazine release. Many of you guys are familiar with the P99, and you know that it has kind of that odd little catch there in front of the trigger guard. So this has an Americanized magazine release, and I'm gonna hit on the high points, uh, and we'll talk about some of the things I don't like, some of the things I do like as we go. Uh, but basically, you've got a tenant for finish, uh, it is a Browning style lock breech action. So you get you know good reliable action there. This one is threaded half by 28 for muzzle devices, which here in a moment we're gonna throw a uh, suppressor on it. This is a Liberty Mystic X. The ammunition that we're running today is 115 grain Freedom Munition Supers. Then we're running some of their 147 and 165 grain subs once we put the suppressor on. Uh, this is available with and without threaded barrels. So. Uh, Pretty interesting gun. Uh, you got forward and rearward uh, posed uh, cocking serrations, interchangeable back straps. That's kind of one of the things that I like. Uh, the back strap that's in this particular pistol is the small version. You got a medium and a large. Uh, Chad and I both found that for our hands, uh, I prefer the small grip just to, you know, I, that's just what I prefer. Uh, the slide stop, pretty beefy and it's completely ambidextrous so it can be reached from either side of the pistol the magazine catch can be swapped out to the other side if you're a left-handed shooter so that's one of the nice things about it you have a loaded chamber indicator that's very very subtle very easy to see i mean when you have around in the chamber you'll see a little red dot near the rear of the channel that encloses the extractor and the extractor on this thing is really beefy really really strong uh, we're going to talk a little bit as we go, but I'm going to load some mags while I'm talking. Uh, the trigger mechanism on this particular gun is pretty freaking cool the way it's designed. It is a striker-fired pistol, um, but unlike some of the other guns out there, let's just say a Glock, where on a Glock, when you squeeze the trigger bar to the rear, you're actually preloading the striker in the process. That's why the uh, Glock has a very specific type of trigger pull that it takes a little bit of getting used to. The Walther PPQ that you see here has a preloaded striker mechanism. So when the striker, when the, when the slide is cocked, the striker is always to the rear and the trigger bar and springs within the inside of the gun are all that actuates striker uh, to fall when you squeeze the trigger. Um, interesting point of note on this particular uh, gun is the trigger is excellent, okay? Um, but that's also kind of one of the, the minor detriments to the gun. Um, Walther had a little bit of a hard time getting some of the uh, police and military units to adopt this particular gun because the trigger pull is so light. And I believe in order for German uh, you know, police to accept a pistol into service, it has to have like a certain um, you know, pre-take up length and a, a certain travel for the trigger uh, and a certain weight for the trigger in terms of where it breaks. And I think that this particular handgun was maybe just a little bit too much on the, the light trigger side for them. Uh, to adopt it. You know, this is a German handgun, which is really cool. They're made in Germany. Um, I'm going to shoot the gun a little bit more here and get this magazine loaded up. Now, if you're paying attention, you may have noticed that we are loading up a uh, couple of different magazines here. One magazine has a flat base plate that holds 15 rounds. The other one has a plus two extension, so that gives you just a little bit more girth under the bottom of the gun to hold on to and you get two extra rounds of capacity. So one 17 shot mag, one 15 shot mag. The gun comes with a mag loader, comes with a trigger lock, and it comes with three sets of back straps. 
We'll go over disassembly here in a moment, but I want to shoot the gun a little bit more for you guys. I'm trying to make this interesting. Let's take out some sodas here. That one lonely one all the way over there on the right. Ah, oh, he fell on me, look at that. <laughs> All right, I got a little soda in the bottom of that one on the end and it's swinging, let's see if I can hit it. Look at that. Then lock the slide to the rear. This gun is a really easy gun to shoot for the most part. Um, Trigger, as I mentioned, excellent. One thing I'm not crazy about, and honestly, the only thing that I'm not crazy about on this gun is the sights. It has those kind of cheesy sights like you see on the Walther P22. And I know that I've been a proponent for the Walther P22 over the years, and I still am. I still enjoy a Walther P22, but I, I feel like for something that's supposed to fit the duty gun niche, maybe they should have just went with maybe a little bit nicer sights, maybe offered like a set of sights with a little bit higher uh, profile for suppressor use, but all in all, not bad. I'm gonna see if I can kill the gopher here. That's not bad. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna see if I can hit him in the head. Headshot. Back of the head. Right there in the neck. Right in the neck, and same spot, look at that. Same spot. All right, tell you what, I'm feeling confident. I'm gonna see if I can shoot him right in the nose. There we go. Did not lock the slide to the rear in the last shot. I don't know what's happening there, but been doing it a little bit here and there. It is what it is. Haven't really had any problems till I've turned the camera on though. It always seems to happen that way. The gun, as you can see, is pretty dang accurate. All right. I'm shooting a gopher in the face from probably 15 yards. I mean, guys, it's meant to be kind of a combat duty type gun, maybe a range toy, something that's fun to shoot at the range. And uh, it definitely excels at that. You can see the pistol's quite accurate. I'm definitely not a pro shooter by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I do like the gun. I purchased this particular pistol for my wife. Uh, we went to SHOT Show a couple of years ago and she got to shoot a 40 caliber version of this gun and she loved it. And she was bugging the crap out of me for all this time and I just finally got around to picking her one up not too terribly long ago and we've been shooting it and, uh, and just having a lot of fun with this particular handgun. Recoil impulse is nice and uh, gentle. The gun is really easy to field strip. In fact, I can field strip it while we're talking. Just cheat the slide back, squeeze the trigger. There she is. Captured guide rod assembly for the recoil spring. Remove the barrel uh, thread protector. And the barrel just lifts right out. Pretty much what you would come to expect from a lock breech semi-automatic modern pistol, okay? Really nothing uh, fancy to report there. The construction of this pistol is excellent. They're very well made. Price point on them is actually pretty reasonable. They're not too bad. So I'm gonna just go through and put the pistol back together. Breakdown is uh, very, very similar to uh, the Walther P22. For some of you guys, got this little tab down here. You just squeeze down, it just springs back in place. That's it. All right, I'm going to load some mags. The pistol's available in 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson. Now, this year, Walther 
uh, released their PPQ-45 in the M2 configuration. So you have the Americanized uh, magazine release that you're expecting to find. Uh, at this time, as far as I know, they do not offer a threaded version of the 45 yet, but knowing Walther, there's probably a pretty strong chance that they are going to offer this particular gun with a uh, threaded barrel in the 45 ACP. The dimensions of the 45 ACP version are slightly different. The gun is a little bit larger. Um, although marginally though, it is a very slim gun for a 45. Um, I don't really know a lot about that particular gun right out the gate. Um, I don't have it in my hands to show you. But the 45 is one that we will probably uh, get our hands on at some point and uh, have a go on. I'm trying to load mags and talk. All right. And you know, speaking of which, the mags seem to load pretty easy with the mag loader. Now, if you're not using the mag loader, the, uh, the springs on these particular magazines are a little bit on the stiff side. So expect that if you don't have really strong hands or really good manual dexterity. If you're a small frame person or maybe an elderly person, the magazines are a little bit difficult to load if, you're, uh, if you don't have the magazine loading tool, which I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want to use them just to speed things up a bit. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a couple more shots with the gun and then we're gonna uh, pause for a moment, reset the range, and then uh, we're gonna strap the suppressor on this bad boy and uh, Chad's gonna take a few shots for you. We just really wanted this video to be kind of a, a look at this gun because you know I, I do like it and I think it's something that this particular pistol is one of those guns that I think more people need to know about and that's kind of why we're making this video. Loaded chamber indicator is doing its job. Got our red showing, telling me that there's a round in the chamber. Um, all in all, pretty simple. Slide to not rock, lock to the rear. Take some long range shots way back there. Guys, this gun is just so fun to shoot and it's so accurate. Um, I really see this gun being a pretty solid contender moving forward for a lot of different things, but primarily one of the things that I'm in love with the most about this and what you're about to see, it's an excellent suppressor host. This pistol will run any ammo that you can throw in it. I mean, we, we literally have tried to get this gun to choke with subsonic ammunition and we can't do it. We'll get to that in a moment. All right, let's try some headshots on our D28 right here. He's kind of lonely. We already killed our poor gopher over there. He's just had a really bad day. Well, that was not a headshot. <laughs> There's a headshot. Real accurate, guys. The gun is definitely more accurate than it needs to be. I'm gonna finish this mag out and then we're gonna let Chad have a go with the suppressor. Slide to not lock to the rear again. Well, actually guys, I lied. Before Chad has a chance to shoot the suppressor on this gun, uh, we did examine uh, the gun a little bit closer after we were having the problem with the slide not wanting to lock to the rear and it turns out we actually have a broken slide stop. Uh, the little lever that the follower on the magazine actuates is completely snapped off and missing. Um, I feel that it's important to mention in this video because I know people take my word on, uh, on things and everything like that. I did purchase this firearm used. However, when I was in the store, uh, the guy that traded this gun in actually came into the store and I was talking to him a little bit. He said, yeah, I traded this uh, firearm in because it didn't fit my hand very well. I bought it new. I never even fired it. And when I pulled the gun apart, it had factory grease still in it. So even though I bought it as a used gun, it was a new gun when I got it. I mean, unfired from the factory, beautiful feed ramp, not a single speck of carbon on the entire gun. So I just want to put that out there 
And now Chad and I have been abusing the crap out of this thing and putting a lot of uh, suppressed ammo out of it. And I don't know if the additional back pressure could be taxing the gun a little bit. I'm not trying to make excuses for the gun. I just felt that it was important to put that in this video to let, make sure that people know that I bought this gun with my own money. Okay, we are gonna test it though. I've got a couple of mags here with one round in them and we're just gonna see if uh, it doesn't lock to the rear. Slide did not lock to the rear. I manually pushed the slide stop up right there. So we have a broken slide stop. It's not something that's gonna stop the gun from running or anything like that. It's just a minor inconvenience. So uh, I'm gonna turn things over to Chad. He's gonna take a few shots with some of this uh, Hush ammo, which is awesome stuff, really quiet. Um, guys, and something I wanna mention very quickly, I don't want the video to be terribly long, but something I think is important to mention. Guys, every company has lemons from time to time. That might've been a bad batch of slide stops. It might have been whatever, okay? I mean, there's plenty of instances that if you look close enough, you're gonna find something going awry with even the best factory gun. That is the nature of manufacturing, is that you're going to have occasionally a bad part get out the door. It does not change my opinion of this gun. I still love this gun to death, and uh, it is an awesome pistol. I don't think anything less of it. I just felt that it was important to kind of put that out there. So. I'm gonna hand things over to Chad for a few minutes, let him tell you about the suppressor he's using here, and we'll have a little fun with it. All right, guys, as promised, I'm gonna shoot the uh, Walther PPQ suppress for you. You know, Eric was generous enough to break the gun for me, so that's okay. His wife will kill him for that. But anyways, we're going to remove the muzzle adapter, and uh, I'm gonna drop my Liberty Mystic X on here. This is a very, very cool multi-purpose suppressor. You can shoot everything from 22 on up to 300 blackout subs and supersonic 308 subs, pretty much anything in between. It's a monocore design with a titanium tube. Monocore is made out of stainless steel. Just a wonderful, wonderful suppressor. Lots of different uses for this thing and a great multi-purpose can for anybody who wants to kind of get into the suppressor game and just have one suppressor to run on a lot of different platforms. This thing's great. Pick this up through a quiet riot down there in McDonough. So anyways, we've got our booster assembly on there. Got our Mystic X. I've got some of the Freedom Munitions Hush 147 grain ammunition. And uh, this gun has just eaten everything that we've thrown through it. I mean, some of this ammo has been choking up in my Glock 17, which is a gun that I just cannot get to run reliably suppressed. Hate to say it, but hey. And kudos to Walther too for threading the muzzle half by 28 for American shooters. All right, let's take a few shots. I'm gonna shoot some steel. I'm gonna shoot some sodas. I'm gonna shoot just in the dirt so you guys can hear how quiet this platform is and you can see I don't have ears on. Very, very quiet ammo. Take a few shots at some steel here. Oh yeah, I right, set our poppers. Woo! And uh, one thing to note on this, the sights are not suppressor height, but what I'm doing is just looking past the gun at my target aiming with the sights and kind of using the top of the can to actually get my good point of aim. And uh, the can will rotate on the piston housing so you can kind of zero it in for each gun that you use it on. Cool fact. All right, let's take a few more shots here. Some steel and we'll shoot some uh, sodas for you. All right, a couple of shots in the dirt to finish the mag out. slide does not lock to the rear of course because the uh, lock is broken all right shoot some more in the dirt real fast so you can get a good idea of how these 147 sound and then we're going to run some of the 165s a couple more shots in the dirt god dang don't you just love it all right sell some in at a long range there we gotta shoot steel 18 by 24 out there about 70 yards take a few shots at that and then i'm gonna hit the sodas and you can hear how loud those things pop when you run in a suppressor. All right, long range shots here. Let's see. Uh oh. There we go. <laughs> oh man, so much fun. 
All right, let's take out these sodas here. <laughs> you hear that pop? All right, let's load up some of the uh, 165s here. Now these things, the Hush ammunition is uh, pretty interesting ammo. It's designed with very clean burning powders that provide the level of pressure to cycle a semi-automatic handgun and um, also run very clean and uh, give really, really good subsonic velocities. The uh, 147s I think are running about maybe 850 feet per second. And the, um, the 165s, I want to say, are chrono in around the sub-800 range, maybe 780 or so. Um, I could be wrong on that, but that's what I remember reading. And uh, I've been having a real hard time getting these to cycle in some of my other handguns, especially like the G17. It just will not run this low-velocity ammo. I've got to run full-power 147 grain, which is still subsonic, but it's not nearly as quiet. But that's the beauty of this PPQ. I mean, like I said, it's just eating every type of ammunition that we've thrown at it. And uh, these 165s are just especially fun because they are just so, so quiet. And, um, you know, this ammunition isn't meant for real like home defense or anything silly like that. I mean, it's, it's range ammo and it's reasonably priced and it's just fun to shoot. Ever since we've been getting into suppressors and all, I and mean, we've been trying, trying to run different guns with different types of ammunition, doing a lot of hand loading and such and experimentation. And, uh, you know, it's just so much fun. I mean, we've been getting a lot of our cans back and, you know, just having a lot of fun with it. I mean, suppressors are that, they are fun. So let's get this magazine loaded up here and run these 165s. I think you guys are gonna like this. Just gonna finish out with some more steel and uh, shooting the dirt a little bit hit those other sodas that we had over there. All right, 165 grain Freedom Munitions Hush. Check this out. Put a couple in the dirt, see how quiet they are. All right, you had that little bit of first round pop, that second shot, the can filled up with the, the carbon and such, the gases, burned off all the oxygen, so now it's gonna be really, really quiet after that second shot there. Listen to that. Ha, don't you love it? <laughs> you can hear those rounds going through the soda bottle and bouncing around the trees and hitting the burn back there. <laughs> you can't help but put a smile on your face shooting a suppress gun, especially one that works. Ooh, missed it. Oh, miss it again. There we go. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, okay. No slide lock, of course. All right. <laughs> all right, I think if I stand out here and shoot anymore, I'm gonna burn up all this ammo. I'm gonna turn it back over to Eric, let him close this video out. Fun gun, wonderful, wonderful suppressor hose, fits the hand well. I mean, there's just really nothing to not like about this gun. I mean, there really isn't. I'm really thinking about picking one of these up as just kind of a dedicated suppressor host. Um, just so I've got a gun that I can run any ammunition through and it'll work. But uh, turn it back over to Eric now, let him uh, finish this video out. All right, I've got a theory about Walking Dead. Why Rick always holds a gun down low, it's because he can't see over the top of the can. I'm gonna try that and see if I can find some reference to why on The Walking Dead their gun handling is so crappy. I've just never been able to figure it out. Let's try it. Carl! <laughs> All right, here we go. I mean, he's like pointing way down like this. I don't have my finger on the trigger, but like he does this number. Now, that's not too bad. All right. Well, that was <laughs> quiet, wasn't it? All right, one last mag. We're gonna wrap this puppy up. Little PPQ is running good. I'm never gonna be a zombie hunter, it seems, but 
interesting to see. I, I, that technique, I don't know, maybe it's effective. All right, let's have some fun here. <laughs> it's just great. It's just so quiet. Well, uh, guys, we hope you enjoyed watching today's video. We had a lot of fun making it. The Walther PPQ is definitely a gun that I personally am a fan of. I like it. Yes, I uh, broke the slide stop on it, but you know what? Stuff happens, all right? Parts break, and that's just part of it. I mean, suppressors as a whole are sacrificial items. They wear out. They are disposable, okay? Suppressors don't last forever. No mechanical part lasts forever. Eventually, something's going to break. Might have just got a bad part, but I'll tell you what. Stay tuned on Facebook, guys. We'll let you know how everything works out getting with Walther. I have every cons confidence because I've worked with Walther, uh, Walther and their customer service. I have no question in my mind that they won't send me the part I need. Everything will be good to go. We'll get what we need and get her fixed up. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.